Hi guys, so I wanted to take you through the new components housing that I designed for the Raptor 2. Originally, we were going to use a slightly different manufacturing process. Um, and I mean, it probably would have worked okay on the Raptor 2 and the seals for water ingress probably would have been okay. But we didn't want to build something that was just for the Raptor 2. We really wanted to make a system, an enclosure that can be put onto any longboard, any rigid longboard. So we ended up redesigning this and it was a big decision to make. It actually uh, took some time to, to get the design right and uh, the tooling and everything uh, obviously eats into our uh, delivery windows and our buffer that we had there so it was a big decision to make but I think it was definitely worth it and I just want to go over it with you guys today so you can see what we did why we did it um, the the actual design on the tops changed a few times the first one was like a Tetris sort of design then I went a wavy design this is uh, just a it's sort of a simple design it's more like like sort of armor or whatever I like it um, it is actually raised up a bit there so it actually protects uh, the the um, interface here it's a, a silicon um, cover there that protects everything and makes a seal around the lid so everything's sealed around that part and the switch under there is fully sealed Okay, this way we're not relying on um, parts that claim they're, they're waterproof. Uh, the charging port has a little cap there that goes on there when you're not charging it. So fully seals up and the display is under there. So we really wanted to know that it was going to be waterproof. And that was the way we've uh, gone there because we couldn't rely on the individual components and getting a, a perfect installation on the aluminium panel that's under there so cover it up with a seal but I think we've managed to make it look fairly nice aesthetically uh, we've got some of these uh, features in here which actually help increase the strength uh, we're using a glass fiber reinforced nylon um, it's going to be super duper strong you can see there's uh, eight screws that hold the lid onto the base so uh, just flipping it over now let's have a look where the wires come out so we've got a, another seal in here which is a silicon rubber and that's where the motor wires and the sensor wires pass through and we've made it so it's recessed up into a little section here which will help prevent water ingress um, and create a really uh, really good seal basically um, you can see the board mounts uh, here the screw mounts so there'll be um, screw inserts that, that go in there there's six of them so uh, I suppose we should move inside now and have a look let's just hide I think that's a hide there. So, uh, firstly, that here is the seal. Now, the, the lid seals with the base. Okay, so when you screw the lid down, it's, it's sealed in there. So, that seal is not normally um, there. It's actually a part of the lid. So, we'll just hide that as well. Um, let's go in and, and have a look at the actual structure here. So the structure, we tried to make it as strong as possible. So there's quite a few of these ribs down the side there that give the walls quite a bit of strength. Um, screws for the lid, uh, in nut inserts, you can see they run down the side there for each side and these bosses here are where the screws come from the other side of the deck so all the screws are down the side and they're external from 
the inside part. And that is critical to have all these things outside of the main enclosure because if they're inside, obviously water can get in. So one really important thing was to make a waterproof case and we've achieved that. So the actual, I can, I can cut this in half. Um, let's scroll in. So you can see the structure. We've tried to make this super strong. So there's a few extra ribs here. That's the main wall and inside it's, it's reinforced with all this extra uh, ridges as well to get quite a strong um, structure. You can also see the battery packs here. They've got another structure around them. So this is a special part we designed specifically for 18650 cells. It takes 20 cells and what it allows you to do is you can still weld cells together using your nickel strips but then this part goes over it's an end cap and it really gives an extra uh, lot of structure you can see there's all these extra ribs here and we're going to be also putting some glue in here as well so not only will the cells be welded together which makes it quite stiff but there that can um, be a problem with vibrations lots of vibrations so what we do is we use the end cap and we glue the cells in there as well and that makes it very strong so there's four of those end caps and they join together the pack itself you won't be able to see this it'll actually be covered with a PVC layer as well you can see the the, the battery pack is removable we've got a clip here and I'll just go back to the full view are uh, definitely removable and this system clips in to the case with these these clips and hard to get into the middle here and it, it clips in there so that all is designed to work together it's a, a nice little simple system but it holds the cells in there and um, obviously it cannot flex it's a super rigid section it has um, lots of reinforcements around it so we're very happy with how that's turned out um, and I think the reliability of this this cell pack is going to be very very good because um, it's just going to be a solid block of energy that can't really uh, be affected by vibrations. It can't flex. It's yeah. It's just going to be really solid. Um, and the the pack itself will have uh, the balance leads for the cells coming out and the discharge um, wires coming out. There is no circuitry. The cells are removable, and all the electronics stay behind. This is great for troubleshooting. It means you can. If, if there are any problems, you can easily diagnose what it is. So try another battery pack if the problem exists. You know the fault lies somewhere outside of the cell pack. Now, this cell pack here, these 40 cells, we're going to release the schematics so people can make this. And eventually, we will also sell these cell holders so battery builders all over the world will be able to make this exact pack they'll be able to choose whatever cells they want um, as long as there's 40 of them and lithium ion cells 18650 cells they will be able to build their own packs and follow our designs and they'll be able to install it into this case and just plug it in and air, all the electronics will work with it so that's going to be really cool to see what people do with that um, now let's just go in a little bit closer and have a look at the electronics here so um, if those of you who don't know what that and that is their vesks okay that's how we basically take the power out of the batteries run it into the motors that's how we control the speed so their um, vesks their speed controllers or 
ESCs, whatever you want to call them, but there's two of them. They're separate. Cool thing about them being separate is if they ever fail, which can happen, um, we can simply remove one and just swap it. Super easy. They're, they're can, you can't see any of the wires here, but each VESC has a, a little connector on there, an XT60 connector, and it plugs into it wires in here, which I'll explain what that is in a minute. Um, and then it runs out, the leads run out to the motor, the phase wires, the three of them, and the sensor wires runs out through this seal. That'll be fully sealed up there so water can't get in. And yeah, connect to the, to the motors and they'll have connectors on them as well. So swapping one of these out is gonna be super easy. Let's just open this section. So the VESCs are mounted onto another aluminium plate. And this whole module can come out. It's held in there with just, you can see these three little holes here. It's held in position with three screws. So that can come out very easily. And um, yeah, the whole module could be replaced if, if we wanted to do a repair really quickly, for instance, and didn't really want to do troubleshooting. If we just, if we know something's wrong here, we can, we can just send a customer this whole module. They disconnect the battery, which is two plugs, disconnect the motors, and this whole module can come in and out. Everything gets replaced, send the other one back. We can do the diagnosis in the, in the lab with uh, better equipment and find out if there's any serious issues, what they were, um, or otherwise, if we identify that the problem is specifically related to one component, the, that part can be sent. Um, under here, let's talk about this. Just buttons aren't working right. So there's the, um, the switch circuit. Um, on the other side there, you can see under there, it has the direct FETs. Now they are actually using this aluminium tray as a heat sink. So this whole tray adds quite a bit of extra mass for heat. And um, not that these particularly tend to get hot or anything, but you might as well heat sink them if you can. Uh, that's the fuse in there. It's one of those super compact mini fuses. Uh, the lid that I just removed there is just a clip on it, just clips in there. You can pop that off very easily and change the fuse. Um, we probably, you probably won't be able to blow the fuse up. We do control the current with the VESCs so that it shouldn't do that, but it's there. It protects everything. So um, that's very user access, user replaceable, easy to access. Everything's got connectors on there. If the whole switch circuit um, fails, once again, it's a, si a simple little part that's mounted just with three little screws that can come out and you can replace it. We've also got the, the rest of the um, battery management system here. It's separate as well. It's actually positioned under this little panel here that hold the switch and the charging port. Um, you can get to that as well. I mean, you do have to um, remove some more screws to get to that. The, the, the point here is we've made it so everything is modular. You can easily access all the bits and pieces and replace them individually, or we can replace the whole module, just send you a whole new one. Um, if, if we cannot do any diagnosis via email or whatever, um, um, this product is going to be awesome. It can adapt to any long board that's rigid and has a flat surface. If you've got a deck that's got a lot of rocker in it, um, I mean, it might not work because you sort of need a flat surface. Uh, well, at least between these screws here, which is a distance of, where's my measuring tool? It's just 36 centimeters, the uh, distance there. So you need a deck with 
a flat spot of 36 centimeters. So um, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below this video. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to our channel, blah, blah, blah. And let me know if you've got any questions. See ya.